Alright, so we are going to be talking about popular culture and visual arts. However, before we discuss how popular culture shows up in art and design, we first have to define what popular culture even means. So here we have two definitions. First is dictionary.com, which states that popular culture is cultural activities or commercial products reflecting, suited to, or aimed at the taste of the general masses of people. Wikipedia then says it is generally recognized by members of a society as a set of practices, beliefs, and objects that are dominant or prevalent in a society at a given point in time. Here we see a Marvel comic book cover that exemplifies the way in which popular culture finds its way into art and design, although it's weird to think about how a comic book, such as this Marvel cover, can be considered visual art, it is. In fact, comic books are filled with popular culture visual art. The specific cover is widely recognized because of the recently released movie Avengers Infinity War. Now we can take a closer look at how popular culture and visual arts intertwine with each other. Popular culture in the visual arts is artwork that's embraced by the general public and is seen in mass media. This can include cultural activities, products, images, and ideas anywhere from film to food labels. However, it does not have distinct borders. Artists use this to reflect on the world we live in and make comments on topics such as globalization, technology, and consumerism. As you can see here, Andy Warhol's tomato soup painting is a representation of the supermarket item Campbell's Soup. It's important to note that popular culture wasn't discussed in art until the mid-19th century, and it began with Western culture. Pablo Picasso was actually one of the first to include a piece of popular culture in his artwork. Then, in the late 20th century, post-structuralism theory along with pop art emerged. Andy Warhol and Roy Lichtenstein became the first well-known pop artists with their popular imagery. Andy Warhol used famous figures such as Marilyn Monroe and Jackie Kennedy in many of his works, as well as supermarket items. Roy Lichtenstein was more known for his work resembling comics. He once said, I never really read a comic, except as a child. I didn't look at comic books as anything except as a place to find these images I was looking for. Here we see the Picasso painting that first utilizes this idea of popular culture. If you look at the bottom left section of the painting, you can see the texture and design of a cane chair. Cane chairs contain a very specific pattern and texture that most people would recognize, even if they couldn't name it exactly. Picasso takes advantage of this by using it in one of his paintings to connect with a large number of viewers. Popular culture and art goes further than just paintings, though. It can show up in photography as well. For instance, this black and white photo of Marilyn Monroe done by Sam Shaw. Marilyn Monroe was a widely recognized actress at the time, most well known for being a sex symbol. This photo then was not only a form of visual art, but incorporated someone who was recognized by the general public. One sub-theme of popular culture is language. Language shows up in pop art quite often with things like advertising of market items or dialogue in a comic book. For instance, this Andy Warhol painting that advertises a Campbell soup box. It uses language to convey with the image it's portraying. In this case, it's one of the most famous and recognized soup brands, Campbell's. Or, in Roy Lichtenstein's comic book painting that uses the word crash to portray a war scene from the Second World War. Not only is World War II a topic that comes up often in conversation because it was such a major event, but the style Lichtenstein uses draws in anyone who has ever seen a comic book. Another example is Jenny Holzer's light display in New York at the Rockefeller Center. It was displayed from October 10th through 12th, 2019 to share testimonies, responses, and poems by people who have felt the effects of gun violence. For instance, this one reads, Around every day you know someone, or they know someone, who was shot or had a gun held to their head. My shooting was a hate crime. Holzer's piece not only shares individual stories, but invites the audience to begin a dialogue about gun violence in the United States which has been a hot topic the past decade or so. Next, there's Barbara Kruger's piece. Kruger is well known for using black and white images with red accents and bold fonts to draw attention to the words in her artwork. For instance, this one reads, We have received orders not to move, and portrays a pinned young woman. Kruger uses the language in this piece to further discuss issues that are commonly talked about today, including feminist politics and this idea of masculine control.
Next, we have the sub-theme, humans and other famous figures. Humans and other famous figures, such as cartoon or comic book characters, find their way into pop culture art because there are a lot of widely recognized figures that make good subjects. For example, Andy Warhol's Mickey Mouse painting. Mickey Mouse is probably one of the most recognized characters in existence, so Warhol portrays popular culture by using him in his painting. Another piece by Warhol that uses a widely recognized figure is his stylized screen print of Marilyn Monroe. Here we have a painting turned into a popular poster done by Shepard Fairey. It was created during the 2008 presidential election and uses an image of Barack Obama to not only encourage voters to vote for him, but spread his message beyond the world of politics. With this, Obama entered into the art world as well. And lastly, here's another example of a comic book that encompasses popular culture by using a ton of famous figures that most people would recognize. The great part about this one is that there are a ton of people and tons of opportunities for viewers to recognize at least one of them. Last but not least, the sub-theme of humor within popular culture. Popular culture adopted humor in many realms. Billboards, television, radio commercials, ads, comic strips, music, including visual art. For instance, the screen print of police officers guarding a donut truck to portray the stereotype joke that police officers like donuts. Or this comical painting done by Romero Brito of a cat in place of the widely recognized painting by Leonardo da Vinci, The Mona Lisa. Another piece that portrays popular culture and humor is Takashi Murakami's Cosmos Ball. Murakami uses a style that is described as cute, psychedelic, and satirical. The specific piece depicts cartoonish figures and flowers and infuses them with Japanese culture. There's also a hint of humor with the faces on the flowers and the larger-than-life smile and fun facial features of the figure. Keith Haring's graffiti work also takes a popular culture topic, drugs, and makes it almost humorous by using language such as crack and whack. Popular culture doesn't just show up in art and design, though. It shows up in fashion, technology, dance, music, etc. Throughout time, what is considered popular culture has changed. For instance, in the 1900s, barbershop quartets, ragtime music, the jitterbug dance, corsets, curled mustaches, top hats, and plain font were all popular. In the 1920s, we had flappers, automobiles, nightclubs, jazz, billboards, and board games. In the 1940s, World War II was a big topic. We were gifted with the company of Jeep. Uh, the Simpsons came out, Velcro, Frisbee, and the Beatles. In the 1960s, there were lots of smiley faces and this concept of hippies. The Vietnam War, civil rights protests, the first man on the moon. We also had Elvis Presley and the Flintstones, the movie Psycho, and skateboarding while all popular. In the 1980s, we had Neon Colors, The Berlin Wall Fell, there were cheesy comedy movies, and weird fashion. Lastly, in the 2000s, iPods, Compare, Flip Flops, the movie Donnie Darko, and Michael Jackson were all popular, to name a few. And last but not least, these are my works cited.